In this quick tutorial, I'm going to show everyone how to set up proper DirectX Stingray materials in 3ds Max 2016, then export that into Stingray so that you can have your materials set up properly. So, first thing we're going to do here in Max is I'm going to create a sphere, put this in the center, I'll make this one meter. Next thing I want to do is I want to open up my material editor by hitting M and you will get this material editor here. So you can do the, the regular one or the compact one. I'm sure a lot of folks who aren't used to this uh, node based system are, are used to seeing this. You just want to go to the slate material editor here. So you can right click in view one, we're going to do materials and we're going to do direct X shader. So now we have this node here. If we double click on it, we'll get some properties over here on the right. Under the DirectX shader, we want to change this to Stingray. So now when we do that, we're going to have all the properties here that we would like to see for our materials in Stingray. You can also open the shader effects graph, which you can see here. And this is the same graph that you will see in Stingray. So if you're used to working in a, in a node-based graph system like this, you can go ahead and work in here if you like. Or if you're not, you can just simply fill in these slots with the materials that you would want to use. So that's what we're going to do today. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. I'm going to use a brick material. So I'm going to call this brick test. And I'm going to rename this one as well just to keep it organized. So now I have this node here named brick test. So the first thing I want to do is I want to fill in these slots. So in this folder here, I have some uh, brick textures I want to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this color and I'm going to drag it right over here into my color map slot. And he's going to show up right here. I'm going to do the same with the normal map. I'm going to use this height map um, as a metallic map for right now. And then we have a, a roughness map. I'm going to drag this guy over. And then I think there's an AO in here somewhere. There we go. There's an ambient occlusion map. So now I have all of these maps assigned here in my material. Now you notice they're not going to show up on my sphere because one I haven't assigned it yet and I haven't told them to show up. So to assign them, make sure your sphere is selected. Hit the A key or go material, assign material to selection. Now you can see that it changed but it, it isn't showing up yet. So to get these to show up, it's very similar in Stingray, you're going to want to set these values here to use the maps to one. So we're going to do a normal map, color map, metallic map, roughness map, and then AO. So once these are all set to one and your shader here is named and you have all your materials or all your textures in your slots, you can see now that this is going to show up here in the viewport one to one is what it would look like in Stingray. So for our purposes of setting to Stingray, I'm just going to make a, uh, a quick plane here. So make a, a square plane here in the center. I'm going to set this guy to four by four and put him in the middle. So also I'm going to go to my materials here, make sure he's selected, do material, assign material to selection. You can see now that my brick material is assigned to my plane. We want to make sure that we have uh, unwrap modifiers assigned, so I'm going to go ahead and add an unwrap modifier here, collapse the stack, and I'm going to change this name to brick test. So now this guy is set up. He has the proper material, which was named a brick test. We've named this, uh, this mesh here brick test. He's centered, and he has the proper materials assigned, and you can see as the, the light reflects and the normals and the roughness are all working here in our scene. So we're going to go to File, Export, Export Selected. I'm just going to save this on my desktop as Floor Brick Test. So now that I have saved that. So, now I'm going to go into Stingray. I've just opened the basic project here and I'm in my content folder. I'm going to grab that floor brick test FBX and I'm just going to drag it here into this scene. So what it's going to do is it's going to add my textures to the texture folder. It's going to set up my mesh and bring in my material. As you can see, I have my material here and if you look on the right in the property editor, you will see all these things that we set up in the direct deck shader are correctly set up and I have my floor here. So 
So we can zoom in on our floor. And here is our material assigned to our mesh properly in Stingray. Now, of course, you can always mess with your, your shader if you like. Over here on the right, you can make this unique. And then you can open the shader graph. And as you can see, it's the same graph that we had in 3ds Max. So you can go ahead and edit your graph here as well. Or you can close this out and stay with the standard material as we have in the property editor. So again, if you take off the color map, you can see the color map is now gone, but we have all our other maps. Um, for instance, we had used a height map as the metallic map. That's going to give it its uh, metallicness. So if we turn that off, you can see that kind of changed and disappeared a little bit. So now that that map is not applied, we can adjust the metallic, make it more metallic if we wanted. You can see it gets darker in the scene. You can do the same for any of these maps. So if we use the roughness map, we turn that off. Now we want to make this a little bit shinier. We lower the roughness. Now you can see in the scene, this is a lot more reflective type rock. But if we turn that uh, roughness map back on, now it's back to its uh, more rocky style appearance. So that's a real quick uh, setup step on how to set up a material with Direct X Shader in 3DX Max. Make sure that everything's named properly and then grab that FBX and bring it into Stingray and that'll make sure that all your materials are set up properly and linked together. Now if we want to edit this again, you can just right click and do send to 3DS Max and follow the interop tutorial and that'll show you how to do all those steps as well.